Takarazuka is an all-female musical theater troupe with a history going back over 100 years. Now, because they're all women, you get half of them playing the female roles and the other half playing the male roles. What's the appeal of this? Just think back to any Yuri anime or high school anime with Yuri undertones you might have seen. You have some of these girls being a little more androgynous than the others. Maybe they're a little taller, shorter hair, huskier voice. Whatever the case may be, all the other girls just completely les out over them. They see them and they fantasize about them being their prince, wearing frilly clothes like they're from Rose of Versailles, like this kind of aesthetic right here. This is the appeal of Takarazuka. Now just to be clear, uh, Takarazuka came first, and then all these other anime like uh, Rose of Versailles, Oran High School Host Club, Strawberry Panic, and other Yuri anime, they took their cues from Takarazuka, not the other way around. I just went to my first show because my wife is a huge fan, she took me to watch one of these, and she is actually still at the theater as we speak watching the same show a second time because that's just how big of a fan she is. My thoughts. These actresses are very talented singers and dancers. That's something that's very easy to understand regardless of language. As far as acting goes, I think they are good actors, but by Japanese standards, I've talked about this before, but Japanese standards for acting are quite different than they are in the West and particularly the United States, so they act about as well as I've seen from anyone in Japanese movies, but they're not the kind of actors that I like to watch. In any case, um, I would give them the benefit of the doubt that their acting is above reproach for Japanese audiences. Okay, so this, uh, this show was split into two parts. The first half was a play with musical numbers, and the second half was just purely musical performances. The second half of the show, I would give a double plus because once again, it's really easy to understand. Just music and dancing. They did really good at that. Um, the first half of the show, when it's a play, I didn't pick up on many of the lines. I'll blame some of that on the language barrier. I'm still not perfectly fluent in Japanese. A lot of it is theatrical writing, not the kind of Japanese you would hear in everyday life. The acoustics, the sound system, that kind of muffles the voice a little bit. And finally, when you hear nothing but women talking for two hours, you're gonna tune a little bit of that out. So, didn't pick up on the entire story, didn't quite like the acting, but I'd still give that side of it a single plus, whereas the musical parts, double plus. The, uh, the costuming for the male actresses, or the male role actresses. Just like you see in this picture here, when I see that, I think, yeah, that's a chick. I think to me, no matter how much Japanese women put on makeup and try to lower their voice half an octave, and whether they're a few inches taller than a typical really short Japanese woman, no matter how hard they try to be masculine, they will never be as masculine as American women are without even trying. So there's that. The Japanese people, maybe this passes off as male, oh, she's 5'8 instead of 5'2. That looks like a dude, basically, but not to me. Binoculars, okay. <laughs> Uh, my wife lent me a pair of these. You're going to want to bring a pair of binoculars to a Takarazuka show with you. I always thought that opera glasses were kind of a meme, but apparently people use them. And at least for Takarazuka, I kind of get the appeal. Because for a typical theatrical show, I don't care so much. But for Takarazuka, when you're having uh, women play the male roles, and they're really going heavy on the makeup and the costuming, you want to see those details as closely as possible. What's really funny about the binoculars is that, um, okay, I've been in Japan for eight years and I still don't know when to clap. I just do it when I see other Japanese people doing it and I just imitate them. So when a character shows up on stage for the first time, maybe they'll clap and I'll clap along with them. And then as soon as they stop clapping, in unison, they pick up their binoculars. It is hilarious. Uh, finally, uh, because we watched this at a, a suburban theater, not the main theater in Tokyo, there was no live band, which kind of sucked. That was something I was looking forward to. I would say if they had a live band, it would definitely be worth the price of admission. Without it, it's a toss-up for me, but if you're a fan of these kinds of shows, you'll probably enjoy it.